Hello everyone, welcome to One Stop Academy English. In this lesson, we will learn the driving rules by simplifying the English in Ontario driving rule book. Today's topic is safe and responsible driving. Being a safe and responsible driver takes a combination of knowledge, skill and attitude. It means that you should have the knowledge, how to drive, the driving rules. You should have skill, means that you should know how to drive. And attitude means that you should not be aggressive. You should have the right behavior on the road while you are driving. To begin, you must know the traffic laws and driving practices that help traffic move safely. Breaking these rules of the road is the major cause of collisions. It means that you should not only know the laws and rules, but you should also follow them. The biggest reason that accident happens is because people do not follow the rules or when they break the rules, means when they are not following them. Traffic laws are made by federal, provincial, and municipal governments, and police from each level can enforce them. If you break a traffic law, you may be fined, sent to jail, or lose your driver's license. If you get caught driving while your license is suspended, your vehicle may be impounded. So who makes the traffic laws? These are the governments. It could be the federal government, it could be the government of your, the province you are living in, or it could be the mus uh, municipal government. And whoever make the laws, Police make sure that you follow the laws. If you do not follow the law, you might have to pay the money in form of fine. You might be sent to jail or your driving license might be suspended. Suspended means that it, you might not be able to use it. You will still have it, but you cannot use that driving license and drive. If you do with a suspended driving license, your vehicle may be impounded. Impounded means that it will be taken away from you. You will lose your vehicle for certain time and you will not have your license. But you need to do more than just obey the rules you must care about the safety of others on the road. Everyone is responsible for avoiding collisions. Even if someone else does something wrong, you may be found responsible for a collision if you could have done something to avoid it. This is very important. You cannot just drive thinking that I'm following the rule because other people can make mistakes. So you should be very careful. And if someone else is making a mistake, you should try your best to avoid it. So what it means that you should be very alert. You should be aware of everyone. You should look around and try to avoid an accident as much as possible because sometimes you might get fine if an accident happens and you could have done something that to stop it happening. Because drivers have to cooperate to keep traffic moving safely, you must also be predictable, doing what other people using the road expect you to do. And you must be courteous. Courteous driving means Driving, giving other drivers space to change lanes, not cutting them off and signaling your turns and lane changes properly. So what does predictable means? Predictable means that not doing something which other people do not expect. So you should not only follow the rules, but you should also be um, 
polite and nice to other people. You should give them space to change the lanes and you should always give signal means that maybe you can give the indicator when you are changing lane. Do not do anything suddenly. You must be able to see dangerous situations before they happen and to respond quickly and effectively to prevent them. This is called defensive or strategic driving. There are collisions avoiding, there are collision avoidance courses available where you can practice these techniques. So when you drive, you should be very careful and try to see if some dangerous situation can happen. For example, if there are two ca cars, they are driving um, too fast or they are changing lanes um, very quickly, you can be careful. So this kind of driving is called defensive driving or strategic driving. And you can um, take courses to uh, which can help you practice the techniques so that you can avoid or stop accidents from happening. Defensive driving is based on three ideas, visibility, space, and communication. So when you are doing defensive driving, three things are important. Visibility means that you can see others and others can see you. Space, how much space is between uh, you and the driver ahead of you or behind you? And communication, that are you giving the indicator when you're changing lanes or you are looking at other people when they are giving the indicators and you give them the space or allow them to move. Visibility is about seeing and being seen. You should always be aware of traffic in front, behind and beside you. Keep your eyes constantly moving, scanning the road ahead and to the side and checking your mirrors every five seconds or so. The farther ahead you look, the less likely you will be surprised and you will have time to avoid any hazards. Make sure other drivers can see you by using your signal lights as required. So now here they're explaining what the visibility is. It is that you see people and people see you. So you can see the vehicles in front of you, behind you, and on your sides. How you can do it? You have to keep looking around. See the road ahead of you as far as you can. Keep checking your mirrors. They're suggesting every five seconds. And if you keep on looking, any dangerous situation can be avoided. Managing the space around your vehicle lets you see and be seen and gives you time and space to avoid a collision. Leave a cushion of space ahead, behind and to both sides. Because the greatest risk of collision is in front of you, stay well back. So you need to have a space on all sides of your vehicle. So when there is a space, it acts like a cushion, means that it keeps you safe. Communicate with other road users to make sure they see you and know what you are doing. Make eye contact with pedestrians. Pedestrians are people who walk, cyclists and driver at intersections and signal whenever you want to slow down. Stop, turn or change lanes. If you need to get another person's attention, use your horn. So people who cr are crossing the road, you should make an eye contact, means that look at them in the eye. 
end to the cyclist as well. So when you are at an intersection, you should also look at the drivers and you give them the signal, signal whenever you want to slow down, stop, take a turn, or you want to change a lane. And if you need attention in that situation, you should use your horn. Getting ready to drive. Before you drive, make sure you're comfortable with your physical, mental, and emotional state, your vehicle, and the conditions in which you will be driving. If you have doubts about any of them, don't drive. So before you drive, you should make sure that you are physically fit. You should also be mentally and emotionally fit and your vehicle should be in a good condition. If you have any kinds of doubts, means that if you're not sure or if you have any concern, you should not drive. Your ability to drive can change from one day to the next. Illness, fatigue, prescription and over-the-counter drugs, stress and your mental or emotional state can greatly diminish your ability to operate a motor vehicle. You should consider these factors before you begin driving and you should not operate a motor vehicle when you are not fit to do so. So what does it mean? It means that you might be a good driver, but your driving ability can be different from one day to the next. Or today, if you were fit to drive yesterday, you might not be today. The reasons could be if you're sick, you're fatigued, means you're tired, you are taking any kind of meditation. It could be um, recommended, given by a doctor, or you bought it from a drugstore. If you have any kind of stress, or you are disturbed for any reason, mentally or emotionally, it can diminish, means that it can um, stop your ability to operate a motor vehicle you might not be fit enough anymore to drive your vehicle. So before you drive, you should be aware and you should be mindful of these things. And if you're not fit, you should not drive. Be physically and mentally alert. Means that you should be present. You should be physically and mentally fit enough to drive. You must be in good physical and mental condition to drive. Don't drive when you're sick or injured or when you have been drinking alcohol or taking any drug or medication that may reduce your ability to drive. So if you have consumed alcohol or if you are taking any kind of drug, which affect your physical, mental, or emotional health, or you're not fully awake because of that drug, you should not drive. Don't drive when you're tired. You might fall asleep at the wheel. Means if you're tired, you might feel sleepy, or you might go to sleep when you're driving and it will risk the lives of other people on the road and of course your life too. Even if you don't fall asleep, fatigue affects your driving ability. Your thinking slows down and you're missing things. In an emergency, you may take the wrong decision or you may not make the right decision fast enough. So if you're very tired, you might not fall asleep but still your thinking ability is not the same if you were not that tired. So in that case, you might make wrong decisions and you might not have the quick thinking to avoid an accident. Don't drive when you are upset or angry. 
Strong emotions can reduce your ability to think and react quickly. So same goes if you are upset for some reason or you're very angry, you should not drive. Know your vehicle. Get to know your vehicle before you drive it. There are many types of vehicle availability, av vehicles available today with many different characteristics, including fuel ignition system, anti-lock brakes, four-wheel drive, and systems for traction control and stability control. Check the vehicle owner's manual for driving in difficult situations and conditions. See the section on dealing with particular situations. Make sure you know where all the controls and instruments are and what they do. Check that all warning lights and gauges, gauges work. Watch for a warning light that stays on after you drive away. It could mean a serious problem with your vehicle. Get to know the controls well enough to turn on wipers and washers, headlights, high beams, heater, and defroster without having to look. Learning to use these essential controls without taking your eyes off the road is an important part of driving. So main thing here is that you should know your vehicle. You should know all the control. You should check the manual, how it works before you drive. And the example is that if you are driving and your warning lights are on, you should not drive because there might be a problem. So get to know everything, all the controls, such as wipers, washers, headlights, high beams, heater, defroster, you should be able to know where all the things are. And so that whenever you have to use it, you don't have to look for them. You can quickly use them. Get into position. Make sure you sit properly behind the wheel. You should sit high enough in the driver's seat to see over the steering wheel and hood. You should be able to see the ground four meters in front of the vehicle. Use a firm cushion if needed. So your sitting position while you are sitting to drive should be proper. Your seat uh, should be high enough that you can see the road. You can see over your steering wheel and hood and the ground four meters in front of the vehicle, you should be able to see that. You can use a cushion and it means that put something, put a cushion on your driving seat if it is not high enough for you. Be sure that you're sitting straight upright in the seat with your elbows slightly bent. Adjust the seat so your feet reach the pedals easily. To check your position, try placing your feet flat on the floor under the brake pedal. If you can do this without stretching, you are seated properly. This keeps you in the proper upright sitting position and gives you more stability when maneuvering your vehicle. So here they are telling us that how we should sit while driving. So you should sit straight. You should not be bended, but your elbows should be slightly bent. Your seat should be such that your feet can reach the pedals comfortably. So how you can check that you're sitting right Put your feet on the floor. And if you can do this, this without making an extra effort or without stretching, it means that you are sitting properly. And if you keep your sitting position proper, you will be more stable when you are driving your vehicle carefully. Maneuvering means you when you're driving carefully. If your vehicle has an adjustable headrest, you should make sure it is at the right height. The back of your head should be directly in front of the middle of the headrest to protect you in a collision. So if on your seat there is a headrest, 
and you can change its position. You can adjust it. You can put it up or down. Then make sure that it is at the right height. height. And the right height is that when your head goes right in the middle of that headrest. So it will protect you. It will keep you safe if an accident happens. Check that you have enough room in the front seat to drive properly and safely. Do not overcrowd your driving space with passengers or property. The seat with you should have enough space in it. Don't put too much stuff on the seat or more than the number of the passengers which are allowed. Keep a clear view. Keep a clear view when driving. Do not put anything in your windows that will block your view. The windows of your vehicle must not be coated with any material that keep you from seeing out in any direction. Neither should the windshield or front door windows be coated to keep someone from seeing inside the vehicle. You should be able to see clearly when you're driving. How you can do it? Do not coat or put anything on the windshield. You should be able to see outside and people from outside should be able to see you. And do not put anything, any material in the window that you cannot see outside. Find your blind spots. Check and adjust your mirrors and find your blind spots, the area on each side of your vehicle where you cannot see. You may not see people or cyclists when they are in these spots. On some vehicle, the blind spot is so large that a vehicle could be there and you could not see it. So, you should use your mirror to see the blind spots. Blind spots are those area which you cannot see. And if you cannot see those area, you might not be able to see a person or a cyclist there. And some vehicles, the big ones, have such big blind spots that you might not even see a vehicle there. So you should adjust your mirrors that you can see those areas. Adjust your mirror so that there are as few blind spots as possible. Blind spots in most vehicles are, the, are to the back left and back right of the vehicle. To reduce the blind spots even more, position the interior mirror so that center of the mirror shows the center of the rear window. You should be able to see directly behind the car when the interior mirror is properly adjusted. Position the left outside mirror by leaning towards the window and moving the mirror so that you can just see the rear of your car. Rear is behind. Position the right outside mirror by leaning to the center of the vehicle. Leaning is when you're bending towards something and moving the mirror so that you can again just see the rear of your car. Avoid overlap in what you can see in your mirrors. Means that you should not be seeing same things in two or three of your mirrors. So they should not be overlap. Because your side mirrors show only narrow angles of view, turning your head to do shoulder checks is the only way to make sure there is nothing in your blind spots. Now here they are telling you how you can make sure that you can see in your blind spots. You can use the mirrors to do so. So they're telling you to adjust your mirrors such, in such a way that you can see what is in the blind spots. So most of the time, the blind spots are in the, on the back, left side and right side. You can also use your interior mirror. It means the mirror inside your vehicle so that the center position of the mirror show you the center of the window in the back. 
So you can see directly behind the car when the mirror is properly adjusted. The left outside mirror, you can adjust it. When you're sitting in the stri uh, driving seat, you can lean towards the window and move the mirror so that you can see on towards the back of your car. So, you should also adjust right outside mirror. You can do so when you bend towards the center of the vehicle and move the mirror so that you can see the back of your car. And don't adjust the mirrors in such a way that you see the same thing in all the mirrors. Your side mirrors only show you a thin, a little bit of the view, narrow angle. So in that case, sometimes you have to turn your head to do a shoulder check to make sure that there is nothing in your blind spot. You should know the blind spots on your own vehicle. You can learn where and how large they are by having someone walk around your car and watching the persons in the mirror. So that's another technique, how to find the blind, blind spots. Ask someone to walk around your car when you're sitting in the car and make sure that you can see that person by adjusting the mirrors. Fasten your seat belts. The proper use of seat belt can save your life. Even a small increase in the number of people who wear their seat belts can save many lives. You must use your seat belt every time you travel in any vehicle equipped with seat belts. This lady here is fastening her seat belt. She is pulling the seat belt from here and putting it here so that it's wrapped around her. All passengers must be buckled up in their own self seat belt, child car seat or booster seat. So here she is buckling it up. So the driver is buckling up her own uh, seat belt. If you have a uh, car seat for a child, you should do the same with it. Or if there is a booster seat, this is also a kind of child car seat to give them a little bit of a height and a cushion. Drivers who do not buckle up can be fined. If you do not wear your seat belt properly, you will be fine and will be given two demerit points. Means that demerit points are to show or to keep a record that you did a mistake. And if you get enough demerit points, you might lose your license. Drivers may also be fined and receive demerit points if they fail to ensure that all passengers under 16 years of age are properly buckled in a seatbelt, child car seat, or booster seat. Level 1 G1 drivers are only allowed to have his or her accompanying driver as a front seat passenger and must have a seatbelt for him or her. Novice drivers must have a seat belt for every passenger. Driver who do not ensure there is a working seat belt for every passenger can lose their license for at least 30 days. So what does it mean? It means that if you are a driver with G license, then you it's your responsibility that you make sure that all the passengers in your car under 16 years of age have properly wore their seatbelt. 
child car seat or booster seat. But if you are a level one driver, you have G1 license, then you cannot even take any other passenger apart from a front seat passenger. And that passenger must be wearing a seat belt. Novice drivers are new drivers. They should have seat belt for every passenger in their car. And those drivers who do not make sure that there are seat belts which work for each passenger, they can lose their license for at least 30 days. Seat belts should be worn snugly enough to keep you in your seat during a collision. So seat belts should be worn in such a way they should be close to you that if a accident happen, then you stay in your seat. They should not be loose. Never put more than one person into a seat belt. This can cause serious injury or even death in a collision. There should be only one person in one seat belt. If there are more than one, it can cause a serious injury or a death in, in an accident. Wear the shoulder strap over your shoulder, never under your arm or behind your back. The lap belt should be worn over the hips, not against the stomach. So if your seat belts are such that you wear the shoulder strap, then you should wear it over the shoulder. You should not wear it under your arm. And if the belt is a lap belt, then it should be worn over your hips, not over your stomach. Use your seat belts always, even when you're sitting in a position with an active airbag. Airbags do not replace seat belts. In a collision, your seat belt will keep you in a position so that the airbag can protect you. So even if there is an airbag in front of you, you should still wear the seat belt because if the accident happens, the seat belt will keep you in the position. You will not move away from there and the airbag will come and will save you. Note, the safest place a passenger can travel is inside a vehicle proper, properly buckled in. It is not safe to travel outside a vehicle, such as in the back of a pickup, of pickup truck or in a trailer that is behind, that is being towed. It is important for passengers to be secured within a vehicle to avoid being thrown from the vehicle during a collision. So you should always sit inside, never stand on the back of a pickup truck or in any open area, because if an accident happened and you are inside, you are safer. Child safety. To be safely protected in a vehicle, Children must be properly secured in a car seat, booster seat or seat belt, depending on their height, weight, or age. Research shows that a correctly used child car seat can reduce the likelihood of injury or death by 75%. Here is a child sitting in a car seat properly. As a driver, you're responsible for ensuring that all passengers under 16 years of age are properly buckled into seat belt, child car seat or booster seat. In Ontario, all drivers must use proper child car seats and booster seats when transporting young children. So children should always be in a car seat or a booster seat or with a seat belt. And what kind of... Um, Seat you would be using depends on child's height, weight, or age. Depending on the child height, weight, or age, you will either use child car seat, booster seat, or a seat belt. Child car seats must meet Canadian motor vehicle safety standards. Buckles and straps must be fastened according to the manufacturer's instructions. Newer vehicles that come equipped with a lower universal 
Anchorage system for securing a child car seat do not require the use of a seat belt. A booster seat requires a lap and shoulder belt combination. Infant who weigh less than nine kilogram must be buckled into a rear facing child car seat attached to the vehicle by a seat belt or the UAS strap. Those babies who are less than nine kilograms, they should be facing backwards, means that their face should not be towards the front of the car. You should put the car seat in such a way that their face is towards the behind of the car. A rear facing child car seat is always best installed in the back seat. So if you should put it in the back seat, never put a rear facing child car seat in a seating position that has an active airbag. If the airbag inflates, it could seriously injure the child. So if you're putting a car seat, it should not be on a seat where there is an active airbag because if airbags open up or the uh, air fills in it, it could injure a child. Toddlers 9 to 18 kilogram must be buckled into a child car seat attached to the vehicle by a seat belt or a US strap. The seat's tether strap must also be attached to the vehicle's tether anchor. So here is a procedure how to put kids who are 9 to 18 kilograms of weight. They should be um, put into a child car seat and their seat belt should be properly fastened. So, children weighing more than nine kilograms may remain in a rear facing car seat if it is designed to accommodate the child's height and weight. Those kids who, whose weight is more than nine kilograms, they should be in a rear facing child a seat only if the child's height and weight is good enough for the particular car seat you are using. Allow, always follow the manufacturer's instructions when installing a car, child car seat in your vehicle. So whenever you put your child's car seat in your vehicle, always read the instructions which come with a child car seat. Booster seats provide 60% more protection than seat belts alone. These must be used by preschool and primary grade aged uh, children who have outgrown their forward facing child car seat. Booster seats are usually used for preschool children and primary grade aged school children who have grown bigger than their car seats. They don't fit in them anymore. They are under the age of eight and weigh 18 kilograms or more, but less than 36 kilograms and who are less than 145 centimeters tall. So here are the conditions. If the child is more than 18 kilograms, but less than 36 kilograms, and um, whose height is less than four feet and 19 in nine inches, they should use the booster seat. What does booster seat do? Booster seats raise a child so that the adult seat belts work most effectively. So it's kind of additional seat, which help the child go to the height that the seat belt of the car, which is used for the adults can work better. The child's head must be supported by the top of the booster, vehicle seat or headrest. You must use a booster seat with a lap shoulder belt. 
the left shoulder belt should be worn so that the shoulder belt fits, fits closely against the body over the shoulder and across the center of the chest. And the lap belt sits firmly against the body and across the hips. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions when installing a booster seat in your vehicle and secure the booster seat with the seat belt when a child is not traveling in it or remove it from the vehicle. If your vehicle has lap belts only, secure the child by the lap belt only. Never use a lap belt alone with a booster seat. So the main thing is that you should always follow the instructions written on the booster seat, how to use it. Children may begin wearing a seat belt once they are able to wear it properly. A lap belt flat across the hips, shoulder belt across the center of the chest and over the shoulder. And if any one of the following criteria is met, the child turns eight years old, the child weighs 36 kilograms or more, the child is 145 centimeters or four feet nine inches tall or taller, do not place a child in a seating position in front of an airbag that is not turned off. So whenever you put your child in uh, a seating position, the airbag should be turned off. The safest place for a child under age 13 is in the back seat. Always secure loose objects in the vehicle with cargo nets or straps and move them to the trunk to prevent them from injuring passengers in a collision or sudden stop. So, if you have nets or a straps or any loose objects, never put them in the, uh, with the passenger. You should always put them on the back in the trunk so that if accident happens, they don't hurt the passengers. Correct installation of a child car seat is important for ensuring a child's safety. So, if the child car seat is installed properly, it means it will make sure that child is safe. Your local public health unit is a good resource for finding out how to properly install a child car seat or visit a local car seat clinic where a certified technician will help you install the seat. So, if you're not sure, there are places you can go which can help you to install the car seat properly. And those uh, places are your local public health unit or local car seat clinic. Note, be careful if buying a used car seat, child car seat. Considerations should include ensuring that child car seat comes with complete manufacturer instruction and all necessary equipment does not show signs of deterioration or damage, has never been in a collision, is not under recall, and has not exceeded its useful life expectancy as determined by the manufacturer. If you are buying a second-hand child car seat, you should be make sure that it comes with the instruction book. It has all the equipments. It's not damaged. It has not been used in an accident. And it does not, it's not very old. It's not uh, older than uh, recommended by the manufacturer uh, how long you should use it. Seat belts and child car seats save lives. Seat belts and child car seats reduce the risk of injury or death in collisions. Seat belts help keep you inside and in control of the vehicle during a collision. People who are thrown from a vehicle have a much lower chance of surviving a collision. So if you are wearing seat belt, you will stay inside the vehicle if uh, an accident happens. If seat belts, you are not wearing a seat belt, there is a chance that if accident happen, you will be thrown out of the vehicle. And in that, that case, 
there are not many chances that a person will survive. Seat belts keep your head and body from hitting the inside of the vehicle or another person in the vehicle. When the vehicle hits a solid object, the people inside keep moving until something stops them. If you are not wearing your seat belt, the steering wheel, windshield, dashboard, or another person might be what stops you. The, this human collision often causes serious injury. So if you are wearing a seat belt and an accident happens, you will stay in your place. You will not be hitting other solid objects in the car. You will not be hitting other people. So that will keep you safer. Fire or sinking in water in rare is rare in collisions. If it does happen, seatbelt help keep you conscious, giving you a chance to get out of the vehicle. There are less chances that there will be a fire or you will be thrown in the water. If that happens, even then seatbelts are helpful because if you're wearing a seatbelt, you will be in your senses and you can get out of the vehicle. In a sudden stop or swerve, no one can hold on to a child who is not in the seat belt or child car seat. Infants or children who are not properly restrained can be thrown against the vehicle's interior, collide with other people or be ejected. So if car stops suddenly and child is not in the car seat, you cannot protect the child. But if the child is in the car seat, then the child will stay put there and it will not collide with the other things in the vehicle or somebody people, some other people, or it will not be thrown out of, of the vehicle. So your child is always safe in the car seat. When using a child car seat, make sure that the seat is tightly secured by the vehicle seat belt or by the universal Anchorage system strap and for a forward facing car seat, ensure the tether strap is also used. When installing the child car seat, press one knee into the seat and use your body weight to push it into the vehicle seat. Then tighten the seat belt or the car seat US strap as much as possible. The installed child car seat should move no more than 2.5 centimeters where the seat belt or UAS strap is routed through the child car seat. So the trick is that you should always make sure that when the child is in the car seat, the seat belt with it or the seat itself is tight enough and is properly installed. Use a locking clip where needed to ensure the seat belt stays locked into position and will not loosen during a collision. Refer to your vehicle owner's manual to see if you will need to use a locking clip. If a rear facing child car seat does not rest at the proper 45 degree angle, you can prop up the base of the seat with a towel or styrofoam bar, pool noodle, 80% of the base of a forward facing car seat should be firmly supported by the vehicle seat. So, if a child car seat which is facing backwards is not at proper 45 degree angle, you should use a towel or a pool noodle to lift it up to the degree that it's at 45 degree angle. But 80% of the base of the forward facing car seat should be supported by the vehicle seat. Turn on headlights at night and in poor conditions. Headlights enable you to see the roadway in front of your vehicle when visibility is poor or as well as making your vehicle visible to others. If the view is not clear, you can use your headlights so that other can see your vehicle. 
Your vehicle's headlights must shine a white light that can be seen at least 150 meters in front and is strong enough to light up objects 110 meters away. You must also have a red rear lights that can be seen 150 meters away and a white light lighting the rear license plate when headlights are on. Headlights are equipped with the option to use the high beam to enhance vision further down the roadway and you, the use of a low beam when you are near other vehicles to minimize the glare of your headlights onto others. When you use high beam headlights, remember to switch to low beam within 150 meters of an oncoming vehicle. Use your low beams when you are less than 60 meters behind another vehicle unless you are passing it. These rules apply to all roads, including divided ones.